Simplifying Boolean expressions has a really practical and obvious use in the real world, despite the fact that it looks and feels very much like something from your worst maths-based nightmares. Imagine that we've been designing the logic behind a new processor. There are billions of logic gates all plugged in together to make interesting things happen. Now, as you've built it, revised your plans and changed things up, if we zoom in to one part of your processor, you've plopped these three components together. An AND gate going into a NOT gate, and then into another NOT gate. You may have already spotted a problem here. Let's watch what happens when we feed it a pair of ON signals. The AND gate outputs ON, which is inverted by the NOT to an OFF, and then inverted again by the second NOT gate into an ON again. Well, that's fine and all, but isn't it wasting time turning it off then on again? Aren't we getting the same output as if we went straight from the AND gate itself? Then what's the point of all these NOT gates? If we were to construct the truth table, we'd find that this circuit is functionally identical to just the AND gate on its own. If we replace these three components with just the AND, then we've made a cheaper and less complicated circuit that would be much easier to manufacture and importantly, that it does exactly the same thing. The simplification of a Boolean expression is the process of removing these irrelevant components and making the circuit as described, but with as few components as possible. We need to be able to do that to a Boolean expression. And in order to do this, we need to learn and apply the rules that allow us to turn a complex expression into something much simpler. This is often something people panic about, but please, do not panic. The only thing you need to do is practice as many of these as possible and you'll get the hang of it in no time. The first rule we'll look at is the annulment law. Now, this is a reasonably straightforward one. You'll see that the law states that a and zero can be simplified to just a zero. Remember, the zero means off. And an or one is just one. Now, why is that the case? Let's look at their circuits. A and 0 is really simple. You'll see that the input A is manually controllable, but the input B is hardwired to be off, meaning that our options with the truth table there are limited. The same is true for A or 1, where the ON signal is hardwired as the second input to the OR gate. Let's pull up the truth tables then. The only possible input we can change on A and 0 is the value of A. And so this means that when we have two zero values being fed into an AND gate, we get a zero from the output. Likewise, when we have A being one and the second off signal, we also get an output of zero. This means that the entire gate is completely redundant. No matter what we do with our manual control signal, we can't get it to output anything other than zero. And if that's the case, why do we even have this gate in the first place? We could completely remove this gate and just run the OFF cable into the next component and we'd get the same result. As a simplification in Boolean logic, this just means that if we see anything that has an AND zero next to it, that we can simplify that into just being zero. A similar thing is true in our A or 1 expression on the right. If one of the inputs to an OR gate is permanently ON, then changing the input A actually doesn't affect the output. When A is 0, the OR gate gives us a 1. When A is 1, the OR gate also gives us a 1. That means that we could just replace the entire circuit with the one value cable, and the circuit would work the same. Meaning that in a Boolean expression, if we see anything that is OR 1, then we can simply replace it with 1. But what does that look like in action? How would you see this in a question, and what would you do to answer it? If we take a look at this expression, then we'll see that it represents a circuit where we have A and B and 0 and C and D. That might be a bit much for the first one you see, but in this case, we can treat the ands as if they're all connected in a single block. This means that because of the presence of a single 0, that we can replace the entire expression with a 0. Well, why is that? 
many people are shocked to see that the entire expression disappears. This is because the ands work as if they glue together expressions into one big group, and all of the other and expressions can be seen as if they were just the a in the original rule. Let's try an example where we use both and and or to show you what I mean. In this case, the expression is a and zero, and c, or d, and e. So basically, the expression means it could be d and d, or it could be a and zero and c. Because of this, we treat the two sides of the or as two separate expressions. That means that any simplification would only affect the separate sides of the or. Here we see that we've got an and zero on the left-hand side. This means that the entire left-hand side simplifies down to zero. Because the right-hand side was separated by an or, it is untouched by that process. So, the simplified way of describing the same expression is zero or d and e. Well, that's much easier. Here we go again, and this time the expression is a bunch of or gates. It's a or b or c or d or one. Once again, because the elements are separated by ors, they have to be treated separately. Uh, but the entire thing is one huge set of ors. So the ors themselves can be grouped as a single expression. We can apply the annulment law to the entire expression because a or one simplifies to one. In our example, the entire expression is linked via ors, so the rest of the expression just disappears meaning that the entire long and convoluted expression is just a one value. Last but not least is another combined expression. Here we've got a or one or b or c and d. That means that c and d are joined as one term in the expression, and then the expressions themselves are joined in the larger set of ors. This means that any simplification that affects the and expression only applies to that bit whereas any simplification that applies to the OR expressions affect everything. Again though, it's only the annulment law. So there's an OR1, which means the entire OR expression chain simplifies down into just one. That's quite a satisfying simplification, isn't it? Next time we'll look at another law that we can use to simplify Boolean expressions. Until then, please like, comment and subscribe.